Hello and welcome to this course, Deep Learning with PyTorch. My name is Anand Saha. My passion lies in bringing cutting-edge AI research into practice. I am more interested in solving real-world problems using the various tools and techniques provided by this domain of study. My background is in enterprise software development and I have worked in the telecom and data backup domains. I'll be your guide in this course and hope to get you equally excited about deep learning and its applications. We'll be focusing on PyTorch as a framework of choice. And yes, I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn. Course Overview This course has six sections. The general layout is that in section one, we introduce you to PyTorch and from section two to six, we talk about a specific aspect or technique of deep learning and solve a problem using that technique. The first section, getting started with PyTorch, will be a soft introduction to PyTorch deep learning framework. We explore PyTorch's capabilities, how to install it. We talk about constructs like tensors and variables, the NumPy bridge, running computation on GPU, and talk about deep learning in general. Section two is titled, Training Your First Neural Network. In this section, we proceed to create our first artificial neural network. We learn about neurons, about loss functions and optimizers, and we put them together into a neural network in PyTorch to classify species of a flower based on its attributes. Section three is called computer vision, CNN for digits recognition. In this section, we focus our attention on visual data, data encoded in pixels. We learn about convolutional neural networks, and concepts like stride sparring and pulling. As a case study, we will build a model to classify photos of handwritten digits and numbers from 0 to 9. Section 4 is sequence models, RNN for text generation. While section 3 was about data with spatial significance, the pixels in an image, section 4 is about data which has temporal significance, sequences. Think of written texts and stock prices, whose elements make sense only when seen in particular order. We learn about RNNs and variants. We learn about word embeddings, a smart way to represent words in vector space, and we'll create a model to generate Shakespeare-like writing. Then we turn our attention to autoencoders. This section is called autoencoder denoising images. In this section, we explain the concept behind autoencoders and explain the variants available. We take a look at the task of denoising an image and build an autoencoder model to do the same in PyTorch. And finally, in the last section, section six, reinforcement learning, balance a card pull using DQN, we touch upon reinforcement learning. We highlight the unique characteristics of this kind of learning with concepts like environment, agent, rewards, and actions. We build a, an RL model using DQN, and as a project, we train a card to balance a card pull target audience. This course has low barrier to entry. This course assumes that you have some Python programming knowledge. You know Python 101. You have dabbled with NumPy, Matplotlib, and Jupyter Notebook. Again, just the basics. You have some preliminary knowledge of machine learning. So if you understand concepts like training and validation set and mean squared error, then you are good to go. But most importantly, you are excited about the prospects of deep learning in solving a variety of problems. And you also want to get started with PyTorch, one of the most approachable deep learning frameworks out there. Approach. This course takes a practical approach to the subject of deep learning. This course is hands-on with show and tell flavor. The concepts and their implementations go hand in hand in each section. I wanted to bring to you the bigger picture, the mental model of the concepts, the intuitions. And I would really like you to experiment. You can take each notebook as a starting point, make changes and see what you get. As a practitioner, you will want to apply these techniques to larger and more practical problems. Tools and libraries. These are the major tools and libraries we'll be using. Of course, we will need PyTorch, which we will use as the deep learning framework of choice. We'll be using version 0.3.1. All our code will be in Python 3.6 and we'll be extensively using Jupyter Notebook as our environment to write and execute the code. Matplotlib and NumPy will be used as and when needed. 
If you have access to a GPU based machine, we will need CUDA as well to enable GPU computation. And I highly recommend that you use a GPU since some of the computation can take a really long time to finish on a CPU. Check out Google Colab, which gives you free GPU access. What you will learn. There is a list of things that I have noted on the right, which would be your takeaway. And you can pause the video to read the list. But stepping back, what I would really want you to develop is a mental model of the deep learning concepts and connect them together into a solution to a practical problem. I want to get you started with PyTorch to a point that you gain enough expertise to navigate other parts of the library with ease, the more advanced ones. At the end of the day, you would want to use this knowledge and for that, what would really matter is your creativity with deep learning so that you can think of novel ways to tackle problems. Code repository. All the code associated with this course will be hosted in GitHub in the repo shown. Also note the curated reading list file. I'll be updating this with suggested readings if you want to delve deeper into the topics being covered in this course. So hope that course introduction charged you up and without further delay, let's move on to the first video of this course, Introduction to PyTorch.